It's the team that brought us Tom Pidcock, that brought us Cameron Mason, a development team for future talent dreamt up from the same stable that brought us some of the biggest names on the pro cycling scene. And next year, they'll be gone. Cycling Weekly and Daniel Benson reported that Trinity Racing, one of the countries or the world's best development teams, will likely be closing their doors on everything except their mountain bike team in 2025. So we're going to explain what's happening, why Trinity are closing, and what that means for the British pro cycling scene going forward. Every time that something goes wrong on the British scene, we hear the usual cries. What could British cycling have done? This is the death of the scene. Where's all that Lloyd's money going? Yes, it can seem pretty demoralising, but there's more to the story than a lack of will from the sports governing body. Before we look at what comes next for Trinity's riders, staff and the scene in general, it's worth bearing in mind that Trinity Racing is no ordinary team. The driving force behind Trinity Racing is Andrew McQuaid, son of the legendary Pat McQuaid, who was president of the UCI in the fallout of the Lance Armstrong era that we don't really talk about anymore. Andrew McQuaid runs Trinity Sports Management, a leading rider agency representing elite talent from around the world, including notable alumni like Tom Pidcock, like Ben Healy, like Cameron Mason and Luke Lamperty. What this means is that Trinity has a business model where they sign riders to the team and their agency in the hope that they can land them on a world tour team and take a cut of their future earnings by acting as their agents. Jamie Barlow, one of the original members of Trinity Sports Management, said in a Rouleur article that there are no upfront costs at Trinity Sports Management, which is becoming standard across most agencies. So the pressure is on the team to develop the riders and land them on the world tour contracts. And the best example of this is Tom Pidcock. Back in 2018, when Pidcock was a precocious uber talent, Trinity set up TP Racing, a small cyclocross team built around their star rider. And there was one aim, according to McQuaid, build a cyclocross team around Tom. The success of this meant it slowly morphed into Trinity Racing, a fully fledged road, cyclocross and mountain bike team, and a funnel for riders into the Trinity Sports Management Agency. So what's happening to the team? The first indication that something was wrong was way back in September when Daniel Benson broke the news that the team was experiencing sponsorship woes. Combined with increased running costs, it was putting the future of the team in doubt. And going one step further, Andrew McQuaid stated that one sponsor had ended its contract with the team in 2023 and another reduced its support in 2024. Now this was during the Tour of Britain, the biggest race of the year for the team and one in which they were performing pretty damn well. McQuaid described it as a very tough situation, especially with the end of the season fast approaching. But if you wanted a solid marketing campaign to go with a call for new sponsors, you could hardly ask for a better one. Paul Manier, a Trinity Racing graduate, won three stages for Sudar Quickstep and Callum Thornley took home the King of the Mountains competition. Unfortunately, this call to action has clearly proven unsuccessful and the prevailing wisdom is that Trinity will close its road and cyclocross teams in 2025. Peter Kenyug, the team's sports director for the past few years, said, I think they're going to continue, but only as a mountain bike team, and that's not confirmed yet, which honestly sounds a little ominous. If Trinity Racing is closing, why is that? We mentioned sponsorships and budget constraints, but how tight is it really for one of the world's best development squads and what's behind the sudden decision to cut back? Well, the recent decline in sponsorship support has undoubtedly played a crucial role. As Andrew McQuaid, the team's manager, has acknowledged, the loss of key sponsors and financial backing have created a challenging environment for the team to operate in. It looks like Specialized was one of the team's big funders, but back in 2022, Specialized quite spectacularly cut their entire ambassador program, and that might have meant a scaling back on their road teams as well, which could have a huge impact on Trinity. Now, we don't know whether that support is through pure cash or supplying bikes free of charge, but either way, taking care of the team's mountain bikes, their side cross bikes, and their road bikes could save the team well over £100,000. And then Wahoo has scaled back on partnerships recently as well. Next is staff and logistics costs. If you're sending teams all over the world, you need to pay the staff that are going with them. Someone like Peter Kenyuk, the, uh, the team's former sports director, is an experienced rider and manager leading what has become one of the most respected teams in the cycling world. And that means his value goes up and he's actually moving on to become the sports director for Astana Kazakhstan, which is just a testament to his worth. And do you remember Jamie Barlow? He was one of Trinity's rider agents, so he helped bring in new riders and handle the current crop. Except he left Trinity in 2021 to create Protégé 258, a new agency with the boxing world heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua. And in fact, 
he beat Trinity to some big new talents that you might have heard of, like junior world champions Kat Ferguson and Lorenzo Finn. That means fewer contracts for Trinity and more competition. On its own, not the worst thing, but combined with rising costs and sponsor woes, it's one more nail in the coffin for the road team. And finally, the changing face of professional cycling means that under-23 development teams are becoming less important for those all-star contracts. Barlow himself said that the sport is transitioning younger. Rem Craven and Paul and Tadej Pogacar are two talents that have set the world alight at a young age. Nowadays, big World Tour teams would rather have their own development squad than look to someone else's, or they'll just cut a deal like Ineos Grenadiers have with the German team Lotto Kernhaus PSD Bank, or closer to home, to Fauti Everyone Active Magico and Team DSM. Trinity hasn't secured a deal like that, and it might have shortened the shelf life of the road team. So we've gone over what's happening to Trinity Racing and why, but what does it mean for the wider British cycling scene? Names like Tom Pidcock and Ben Healy, they honed their skills under the Trinity banner. So the question people will be asking is, is this closure a symptom of something bigger going on in the British cycling scene, and what does it mean for the development pipeline for future talent? Yes, the impending closure of Trinity Racing's road and cyclocross teams marks a significant loss for British cycling. It's a team that has consistently produced talented riders and achieved notable successes, and its distinctive kit was a fan favourite of races like the Tour of Britain and the National Road Series. And in fact, it was one of the few teams that took its obligations to sponsor seriously, with uh, great media coverage and an effort to build a personality and to grow its fan following, and honestly, it's pretty disheartening to see it succumb to the pressures of the sport. This all means that there will be just one UCI Continental team on the British scene next year, St. Piran. And that's if they survive the controversies that have dogged them for the past few weeks. Well, this aged well, didn't it? About an hour before this video was meant to go out, St. Piran announced their closure ahead of next season, which in fact means there will be zero men's UCI Continental teams on the British scene next year. The rest of this video still stands, of course, and we will make a follow-up on St. Piran's situation shortly and what it means for the rest of the British scene. In the meantime, back to the video. In conclusion, the closure of Trinity Racing is undoubtedly a setback for elite cycling in the UK and the British cycling scene's influence abroad. The team played a crucial role in developing young talent and providing a platform for them to showcase their abilities. Without a team like Trinity, willing to invest in world-class talent at a young age and give them the opportunities to perform at the highest level might mean that we miss the next Tom Pidcock. However, there are other teams out there and the team's legacy will live on through the many riders who pass through its ranks. Maybe, just maybe, another team will step up to fill the hole that they leave on the roads and side cross scene. And, of course, we can always just watch them ripping up on the trails instead. Okay, that's everything from me. What do you think of Trinity closing its road and cyclocross teams? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.